Good morning, Joe. Well, look, if we look at, uh, we've been trying to figure out what Elon Musk is going to do with Twitter if this deal closes, and perhaps a tweet from just a few hours ago from the billionaire himself may give us uh, some clues. He said that the purchase of Twitter will be an accelerant to creating X, the Everything app. Now, when I heard the Everything app, it reminded me of my time in China, and the super apps were there, and in particular, uh, thinking about WeChat. And just for our viewers who, who aren't aware of what WeChat is or how it works, it's a messaging app, effectively, owned by Chinese tech giant Tencent has got 1.29 billion users and I can't stress enough how ubiquitous this is in the daily lives of Chinese citizens. You can do everything in it. Messaging, payments, e-commerce, uh, ordering food, ordering taxis, booking flights, gaming. No need to download all these disparate apps as well. And the Chinese use it every single day. Uh, and one thing we know is Elon Musk has expressed uh, uh, admiration for WeChat. Earlier this year in the town hall with Twitter employees, he called WeChat a, a great app. He mentioned that there wasn't a WeChat equivalent outside of China and buying Twitter could be a real opportunity uh, to create uh, an app that resembles WeChat. Elon Musk in that same town hall hinted at potential features that could be in his version of Twitter, including payments. Now, this is a key part of the WeChat offering in China as well. One difference, of course, WeChat heavily censored in China, something that is unlikely to happen with Elon Musk's version of Twitter, given his views on free speech. But one thing I would mention is there are a number of challenges with this. Firstly, we haven't seen super apps of this kind take off in the US or Europe or other Western markets. The culture of app usage is very different. The nature of the tech space is is very different as well. For example, JD.com in China is part, is integrated with the WeChat messaging app. It would be unlikely you'd see something like an Amazon integrated in Twitter. So that's a big question mark as well. Also, regulatory concerns. When you start talking about payments and financial services within these apps, that comes with a regulatory burden as well. So that's a key part, part of this story. But clearly, uh, Elon Musk feeling some sort of inspiration here from WeChat and Tencent over in China, hoping to replicate that to reach his desire of a billion users using Twitter if this acquisition does close, guys. Uh, thank you, Arjun. And I'm glad, you know, you said that for viewers that might not know exactly, um, you know, what WeChat is. And, and, but, but, but I was listening very closely. And uh, 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 what I don't really get, Arjun, is why hasn't... We could do that. Why haven't we? And someone could. So are there... Wh what are the cultural... Um, why doesn't it happen? Why hasn't it happened in, in the West? And it, it's been so widely adopted in China. Yeah, I think when you look at the Chinese tech landscape, that has a big part to do with it. You've got these giants, Tencent, Alibaba, yeah. uh, Baidu. These companies are the ones that are controlling a lot of these super apps. So with Tencent, not only does it control WeChat, which became a ubiquitous messaging app, but it developed its own payment service, but also invested in other companies. So, for example, I mentioned JD.com, the second largest e-commerce player in China. Uh, Tencent was a direct investee in JD.com, and so that integration was able to happen happen. It's also purchased, acquired, and has stakes in many other companies that operate on its WeChat platform. So yeah. that's one of the reasons. It's very different. Whereas when you think about Twitter uh, and Amazon and Facebook and Apple, they're all competing with each other, which makes it very difficult to create this yeah. kind of, of synergies between it's these different not, apps. And Elon's earlier PayPal. I mean, he, that's right. what I said earlier this morning. He found PayPal, PayPal, right? And that's one of the things that... Look, we also have more competitive laws in this country. Would it work without everybody. censorship, Arjun? Is that part of the, I mean, do you need, do you need that chance? They're much more comfortable with a lot of, of uh, central government oversight. So uh, China, obviously the CCP, but if there was no censorship, would, would it work? Of course, Twitter has censorship. It, it, it'd work. If there was no censorship, it, it'd certainly work. Of course, when you look at, again, the Chinese internet landscape, it is uh, heavily censored uh, from the central government. There's also self-censorship from a lot of those companies. Of course, uh, you know, a lot of users on the platform in, in, in U.S. market, in Europe, we're not used to that level of censorship on these platforms. So I think it would work. That's something that would be part of the appeal of any kind of Elon Musk platform. Uh, but, but as you mentioned, that competitive landscape is very different in, in our markets compared to China, which may be quite a large barrier to creating some sort of WeChat-like service uh, in the U.S. or elsewhere. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.